realize that you literally are your brother. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, welcome back. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's been a few weeks, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Sometime before our big events here at the monastery, it feels like a lot has has shifted since then, or a lot's been going coming up for healing and just a lot of insights. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. There's a period of two or three weeks, and now it's a lot to talk about. You had some huge insights, huge healings during the Strawberry Enlightenment Retreat, and and yeah. Do you feel like you want to share? Hmm. Well, I think, yeah, well, I can just kind of say, yeah, some of the big themes, of course, like anyone else in our healing journey that were coming up for me were just kind of this, uh, like these feelings of specialness and kind of thoughts and patterns of competition and <laughs> and just actually seeing like, okay, wow, this is really flushing up for me. I don't feel good. I feel quite resistant to letting it go, but you know, I don't feel good. And just this deep prayer in my heart of, okay, how can I move through this though? Like, you know, what's the way out? And, and before I get too much into it, there were certain quotes I felt like I wanted to share and I may share more kind of throughout um, I was sharing some with Andy, but yeah, I'm not sure if they're actually in any certain order, but there is a feeling like behind all of them that I feel applies anyways. So, um, I may pull this out from time to time, but these are all from a course in miracles, different sections throughout. I just, you know, just different things that were res really resonating that I felt would kind of apply for our, for our, um, our topics today. So I'll start off with this one at least. You who are, are not at war must look for brothers and recognize all whom you see as brothers because only equals are, are at peace. Because God's equal sons have everything, they cannot compete. Yet if they perceive any of their brothers as anything other than their perfect equals, the idea of competition has entered their minds. Do not underestimate your need to be vigilant against this idea, because all your conflicts come from it. <laughs> so just for this idea of competition, and you know, what was coming to my mind is like, well, what is competition? We think so often of maybe, like me, I used to play basketball in high school and, and I played sports pretty much my whole life until I got to college because by the end of high school, I was just, I, you know, I had just gotten so burnt out and part of my deep healing and what's kind of started to awaken my mind into this spiritual journey or spiritual awakening was like these very humbling moments in in sports and everything where I just felt like, okay, I can't do it anymore, you know? And yet actually competition is so, is so subtle. It plays out in everything. Any moment where you perceive any difference between your brother, your sister, however you want to say, and yourself, any little different, whether, oh, look how good they are at this. You've entered into the world of competition you've entered into this place where you are no longer equal and therefore no longer at peace. And either they have something you don't or you have something they don't. But even if it seems to be sometimes better to be in the place of, oh, well, look how well I'm doing and look how you know bad they're doing, like at least I'm better off. As long as you hold one side of that coin, you hold both. You're in that duality of like the pleasure and pain. And it's all actually pain. And yeah, so I wanted to kind of tie that in a little bit to my experience at uh, the recent Strawberry Fields Enlightenment Retreat and uh, the Heart Song uh, Voice Liberation Retreat. 
because <laughs> yeah for me what had happened was um yeah i started to feel this attraction towards this uh towards this girl that had come to volunteer with us and and yet i was just my prayer in my heart was always kind of like well i don't really want to make anything you know happen i don't want to force anything you know i want everything to come from the spirit that was the prayer mm -hmm. but then of course <laughs> the ego always steps in with with like when you set the deep prayer it's like everything that's not that has to come up and i kind of forgot that always oh, that was my prayer you know i got kind of lost in what then started to come up which was yeah these feelings of kind of wanting to be special and then part of all that healing which i just feel is like the grand orchestration of it all is is that then the girls started to reflect attraction towards me as well and that was kind of like almost game over in my mind it's like oh i have an attraction she is an attraction that Oops. means this is for me like it's it's a done Even deal more of a flusher more of a flusher because i had just thought i was reflecting on it afterwards like hmm, i wonder if you know if there hadn't been this expression of attraction towards me would it have been as much of a flusher like i probably would have just dropped it pretty quick like oh okay it's not for me but because of that it just led into this really deep healing for me this deep orchestration of of jesus being like okay do you trust me because we're going to go on a, on a deep journey here and what happened next was another kind of um uh, another person in this community uh, i didn't know all of the context and all the kind of things that were going behind uh behind the scenes behind the yeah. scenes but there was another guy here who was actually also attracted uh to this girl and and yet i didn't actually again have the full context that that he had had visions of her months ago and i didn't also realize because it had been shared quite yet so it was just a deep orchestration deep playing out of trust of like all right jesus <laughs> you got me because i have no idea what's happening here that she actually had a vision like a year before about you know marriage and, and being with him and i didn't know any of this and actually at the time all the attraction was still being shared with me and just as it all as it played out it's initially played out with the guy first sharing with me like oh i'm actually not attracted and you know like you don't need to feel any competition I, I was like oh my god how did he know how did he know that i had like these subtle thoughts in my mind of like oh i need to maybe be a certain way or keep the attraction to me or all these certain things you know again i was in this world of duality at that point and then just as it played out again um yeah it was it then played out with him then sharing with me like a couple days later oh actually no i feel a real strong feeling in my heart and then her sharing kind of the same thing of like oh actually i feel like a big heart hard opening to both of you and that's where really more of the competition thoughts started to get flushed up because it was like oh both of us so maybe there's a way I can get it tilted more to me or something. I could just see the thoughts coming up. And, and yet the whole time it was like this sense of pain. Like, I don't feel like I want that, but there's a resistance. There's something here that feels attractive. And I don't know how to let it go because it actually feels like I'm going to lose something here. You know, there's something that really resonates. I feel a deep sense of connection in my heart and you know, there's an attraction and it seems to some of it be towards me. And so there's all that playing out. And then, yeah, without going into too many of the details, then it near kind of the end or during heart song, it really became obvious that actually throughout this whole time, I was having these signs and symbols of, of like, Hmm, I feel like actually it's, it's not for me like this attraction or saying, it's not like a relationship thing here. It's, you know, there's a connection, there's a heart opening, but it's actually not what I think it's about. Mm -hmm. And yet the whole time, again, I could see these signs and symbols. I could see that, um, yeah, there's something deep playing here, you know. Yeah, it's really feeling. just for you to allow yourself to open your heart. 
yeah to love the love pour through yeah and yeah. and this orchestration of this prayer had my heart of actually beyond even what i shared before i'd forgot that during this time i wanted to really um i really didn't want to have to like prove myself anymore i wanted things to just come my way as like almost a cherry on top i just wanted to be in the flow of service with the spirit totally just you know listening and following the spirit and then if anything came my way that i seemed to have a preference for or a desire for i wanted to just kind of land so like easily and gently yeah. in my lap i didn't want to reach out i didn't want to grab yeah i didn't want to force i didn't I want to compete kidding. you know i didn't want to like strive for it and so that was kind of the healing going on behind it like the heart opening it's not like what you think it's it's like it's for something something so much deeper here and <laughs> yeah it was just a wild ride because actually i went through it was like at times i had described it as oh my god i'm in a nightmare is what it felt like initially from my limited perspective it felt like yeah it's like i could just see that i was looking through a keyhole and through that keyhole i could see nothing but limit like i was so limited and And yet, it's when I started connecting with a brother here, um, a trusted brother, that um, that I started to get this higher perspective, like starting to see from above the battleground. And as I started to actually get a higher perspective, I actually felt this deep sense of relief in my heart, like like I was starting to get a bigger context. And that's what the ego is. It's like this, it's this limited point of view. And of course, in this limited point of view, when it's so focused, you can't, you can't see actually all the love, the whole gift, the big orchestration of it all. You can't see like all things work together for good. Mm -hmm. And there are no exceptions to this except in the ego's judgment. And so when I started getting this higher perspective, I felt this relief and I felt that, oh my God, actually, I'm not even sure I wanted this relationship. You know, I just wanted to feel this deep sense of love in my heart. Yeah. And, you know, when I could get really more honest, you know, getting the higher perspective started to pop me out of this limited point of view and I could see the bigger picture and I could just feel like, wow, I just want to support this heart opening, like the heart opening, whether it seems to be, you know, this body or that body, you know, whatever's going on. It's like, I could just feel like, the expansiveness of it, of it all and actually what i didn't share with you or i don't think i did was i had this inside my mind after joining with this brother the first time and yeah it was this thought that like what was just being shared with me is like trust like whatever is meant to happen will happen mm. and whatever is not meant to happen won't happen and there's nothing you can do to change that and i and when i was really kind of sinking into that i thought well if i can't change anything then i could just feel like intuitively in my heart i just want to like support them i want to support like that heart opening and i could just feel like the release like the it's like as i supported that as i stopped fighting against like the river, the script, instead of trying to like work my preferences into it. When I stopped fighting it, I could just feel this big, um, yeah, like my heart was opening. As I support the heart opening, it's like this giving and receiving are the same. And so then I went on a walk with this girl during the event and I just shared all this, like I just wanted to help support like your heart opening, whatever that means, whatever that looks like. And then I went to go sit with the guy after actually i went to go then sit with both of them during lunch and i just shared all of it and i held the guy's hand and like you know i just love you like i love you guys i just wanted to share the heart opening and still at that point i didn't you know know more of the context and then afterwards when i had a second joining because i felt such like ah oh, there's something in my heart i knew something was happening and when it became obvious that it was actually for them it was like it was like spirits orchestration when I could see all the signs and symbols and get really honest and get the bigger pictures. Like, Oh my God, this is so beautiful. Like it would be 
actually unfair for me to like step in the way not that I actually even could but even the attempt of it it's like it's just so beautiful the orchestration of it all like nothing and it was a big it, it just really proved that again there's nothing I can do that you know could change the script like it anyways it was meant for these to be together and of course all this goes beyond that but I was <laughs> pretty personally involved so this was very healing for me and very revealing as an experience as an authentic experience and so afterwards later that day that night after we had a big session at the heart song I just I felt really in my heart like I wanted to extend this gift I was receiving so I went and found both of them they're sitting next to each other during this session and, and I just I went up to him and I gave him a big hug and I just said, I bless this union. I just, I could feel like the words, like I just want to extend this because like that's actually what I, I want to feel in my heart. Like this, this opening, this. Cause it's your support. Union. It's my union. It's yeah. like, I felt like I was part yeah. of it. It's just, this is the role yeah. for me to play in it. So yeah, I don't know if you wanted to share any cause I have some course quotes again, where I wanted to share you from share Yeah. Quotes, there's so many that were good ones, but um, let me see here. So there's a, there's a lot of them, but there's some here that I had found. Okay, yeah, this is a good one. <laughs> Think what has given those who share their father's purpose and who know that it is theirs. They want for nothing. Sorrow of any kind is inconceivable. Only the light they love is in awareness and only love shines upon them forever. It is their past, their present and their future. Always the same, eternally complete and wholly shared. They know it is impossible their happiness could ever suffer and could ever suffer change of any kind. Perhaps you think the battleground can offer something you can win. <laughs> That's a winning thing. <laughs> can it be anything that offers you a perfect calmness and a sense of love so deep and quiet that no touch of doubt can ever mar your certainty? And that will last forever. The only safety lies in extending the Holy Spirit because as you see his gentleness in others, your own mind perceives itself as totally harmless. Once it can accept this fully, it sees no need to protect itself. The protection of God then dawns upon it, assuring that it is perfectly safe forever. The perfectly safe are wholly benign. They bless because they know that they are blessed. Without anxiety, the mind is wholly kind. And because it extends beneficence, I can never pronounce that word. It is beneficent. <laughs> Saf <coughs> Safety is the complete relinquishment of attack. And what is attack but any thought that should be different than, you know, that things should be different than they are. That's what an attack thought is. No compromise is possible in this. Teach attack in any form and you have learned it. And it will hurt you. Yet this learning is not immortal and you can unlearn it by not teaching it. Since you cannot not teach, your salvation lies in teaching the exact opposite of everything the ego believes. This is how you will learn the truth that will set you free and will keep you free as others learn it of you. The only way to have peace is to teach peace. By teaching peace, you must learn it yourself because you cannot teach what you still dissociate. Only thus can you win back the knowledge that you threw away. An idea you share, you must have. It awakens in your mind through the conviction of teaching it. 
Everything you teach, you are learning. Teach only love and learn that love is yours and you are loved. <sighs> so, a lot of this was coming to me last night. I was like, oh, thank you. Because <laughs> I felt like somehow I was, I, re I was really having an experience of that during that festival, like an authentic experience. Like I, you know, I was hearing the metaphysics and I was hearing Jesus like speaking to me that whole time, but it's like, I couldn't, the, the you know, the desire to be a victim was too high at that time. And I had to wait until it really became too painful. I think someone even wrote like, how do you forgive? And <laughs> my experience is you really pay attention to what you're feeling in that moment, you know, at that time. And you allow yourself to fully feel it because you will not be willing to let go. Um, yeah, there's a quote like, until you're willing to ex experience the full extent of your own self-hatred, you will not be willing mm -hmm. to let it go. And that's how I feel like forgiveness has played out for me or like the real release where it's like, I need to be willing to fully face what's going on right now to see that it's actually valueless, that it's not giving me what I think I want. And through that, through that feeling and letting go and just watching it, then when I can see it's not valueless anymore, actually the mind usually just gently lets it go. And during that, that time, that's when um, for us, like we have these tools, Instrument for Peace and uh, Spiri's uh, doing a Spiri session or now Spiri, the app is in beta. I think it's in beta now is it's being extended well anyways it's it's going to be released the next few months as i've heard um you know we have these tools to help with that releasing process that process to see that oh what i'm holding on to actually is not serving me it's valueless it's you know it adds nothing to my peace of mind to my happiness all of that and so that's, that's like forgiveness. That's what I had to see in all of it, get a higher perspective and see that what I was holding on to wasn't serving me. And it's through the extending, it's through like this teaching, what I would learn through this sense of actually collaboration. I want to support what's actually for the whole, um, that that's kind of the, the way out. And I was telling you that that whole time throughout all of this, intense experience for me like there were times where i was really feeling like can i leave the festival can i go back to canvas you know like it was just so intense for me like it was just really flushing up this like yeah all this kind of darkness in my mind and and i was just i was hearing like how can i win if a brother has to lose you know not that it's even like possible but it just it kept over and over and over in my mind. I kept hearing that, like, like, because it's not for me. It's not for me to try and make something happen. How can I try to compete with a brother if one of us has to lose? Like, that's that was one of the quotes. I'll see if I read it. We're getting shorter on time here. But, yeah, that was just, that just felt profound for me. And I was like, I, I don't want a brother to lose. And I feel like the only way we all win is, by th through that listening and following, like what serves the whole, what will bless everyone in this and how can I support that? How can I be a part of that? You know, and, and not even thinking I know how, cause that was like, I, I had shared that prayer with them and it, you know, just sharing like, I don't know how, but I want to be of support. Like I want to support all of this. So, yeah, I don't know. There's probably so much more to it. It's so deep and there's so much to it, but no, it's like a, David once said, or I post up as my status, but he said when he was, when he used to be like stuck in these patterns, he would just tell the Holy Spirit, just use me, just use me. And he said, it's, it's a deep humbleness of just use me, use me, use me. Like, I don't know the way out of this, out of, out of this pattern, but just use me, use me, use me. And so it's just like what you said, the answer is listen and follow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and you were saying, like, how could I win if a brother loses? It's because, like our intro, it says, like, you literally are your brother. 
so it's like of course you can't win if you lose you know it's like it does, that literally doesn't make any sense and that's why yeah so mm. yeah there is something else um it's just on the tip of my tongue before but Let's see if it comes back to me oh yeah it's just around with all all the specialness you know things that are fleshed up in that it's like you know, it's like specialness can only arise or like that, that like that neediness, all that. I mean, this whole world is, is a special relationship. And so it's like, it just goes so deep. It's beyond just the interpersonal that we normally speak of it as. But we really, we could really see this week when we were joining about this, that, or like, I, I could really see this, that when I'm not feeling connected, to the inner teacher, you know, to, to Jesus, to love, you know, to just within. It's like, that's, that's where then I start feeling like this neediness, this thing, like this desire for things to be different than they are in the moment. That's where the attack thoughts start to come in. The competition, you know, as soon as I feel lack, it's like, well, I need, I need this. And then how do I get that? Well, I have to be better than this one or else they're going to get it. You know, that whole game starts to play out right from, it's like it, it starts here, you know, it starts from uh, like not going within, not being with the teacher, not facing, you know, wherever you fear to go is where he's hiding, is where the ego is hiding. He's hiding behind your pain, is what they say in the movie Revolver. And it's like, you, you got to be willing to face it to go back, actually. And it's like, he's hiding behind it. Also, the spirit, love is even behind that. It's like we got to be willing to go towards that, to face it, to actually reconnect. Because that was the thing. I was stuck in a loop for a little bit where it was like, okay, there's pain here. That feels good. I want to go there. But then pain there because it was only ever reflecting. It's like relationships in and of themselves. We were really seeing that it's like relationships and actually anything else. But that was really kind of the hot topic for us right now. Um yeah, it was like they, they don't they don't give anything of themselves. They only reflect your current state of mind. So if you're feeling lack, you're probably going to notice a push away or people like walking away. You know, just you're not going to see usually those reflections of love. But if you're in this state of of feeling complete, of being in the flow of the spirit, of in your joy, then anything that comes to you afterwards is, is just like a cherry on top. And then it's like the whole world reflects that love. Like it even seems like symbols seem to come to you. But it's like it always requires that, that connection first. That, okay, what serves the whole? Let me line up with that for my joy. Not to then get something. Yeah. It's yeah. like so that I can be it. And then everything just comes gently from there. Yeah, because the world's only a reflection of your mind. You know, like if you have lack inside, and you're experiencing lack, then that's what you're going to see all around you. And if you're feeling that love, then everything seems to come to you as just a reflection of that. And that's why it's a cherry on top. It's a cherry on top because it's not the source of it. Yeah. But it's just like Holy Spirit saying, oh, I just love you so much. <laughs> it's just the world's always a reflection of your mind. There is no world outside of you. And that's what we're really learning through all this mind training. So, yeah, that's really like, that's like the big lesson, you know, if you get that one lesson, then it's like, it's over. It's, it's over, you know? Yeah. I feel like, yeah, I feel like there's so much to this. Like, I feel like maybe there'll be more Facebook lives because there's so many quotes I found in there that yeah. I almost wanted to do a whole session just on the quotes, yeah, you know, think, just read them all. I think we will do more Facebook lives. I want to say it again, but if anyone has any kind of questions of any sort, you can always send them to me or Nicholas on Facebook. Um, through Facebook Messenger and we'll probably do a lot of lives and we can answer questions anonymously or not either way. Yeah. Yeah. So Yeah, just thank you everyone for allowing yeah, us to share you. some of this. And yeah, it's just been a real blessing to keep actually teaching what I would learn. And and it was such a powerful experience. I felt like I had to I mean I've been extending it since, but I felt like this was for the show as That's well. Beautiful. Thank so you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, brother. Thank you, everyone.